Welcome to our lecture online. In the previous video, we tried to show, at least we started in the process of showing that if we have two springs and we apply a force to the spring such that they elongate, that the energy stored in the equivalent spring with the equivalent spring constant is equal to the sum of the potential energy stored in each of the individual springs, which is shown by this equation right here. That one half times the equivalent constant of the two springs times x1 plus x2 quantity squared, which is the total elongation, must equal one-half k1x1 squared plus one-half k2x2 squared. In the previous video, we found the relationship between x1 and x2 in terms of the spring constants. We're going to be able to utilize that in the second part of the problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to rework the left side of this equation to make it look like the right side of the equation. So what we're going to do is say this. So here, we're going to take the left side of the equation and indicate that this is equal to one-half times the spring constant, which we can use this form of the spring constant right here, which is k1 times k2, the product over the sum. And instead of writing x1 plus x2 quantity squared, we're going to write that out as being x1 squared plus 2x1x2 plus x2 squared, like this. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to replace x2 by what x2 is equal to in terms of x1. So then we can say that this is equal to 1 half times k1 k2 over k1 plus k2 times x1 squared plus 2x1, but instead of x2 we're going to write k1 over k2 times x1. So here we have an x1 squared term as well. And on the right side, we're going to go plus x2 squared. So it would be k1 squared over k2 squared times x1 squared. And notice all three terms contain an x1 squared, which can be factored out. So this is equal to 1 half times the equivalent constant, k1 k2 divided by k1 plus k2 times, when we have an x1 squared factored out, we have a 1 plus 2 k1 over k2 plus k1 squared over k2 squared times x1 squared. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to write all this over common denominator k2 squared. So this is equal to 1 half times k1, k2 over k1 plus k2 times, so it would be a k2 squared over k2 squared, because we're going to write everything over a common denominator k2 squared, so that plus 2 k1 k2 plus k1 squared, all times x1 squared. And then, I take a look at this, and that looks like a perfect square. So this can be written as 1 half times k1, k2 over k1 plus k2 times, the numerator can be written as k2 plus k1 quantity squared. Now, it doesn't matter if it's k2 plus k1 or k1 plus k2. And all that divided by k2 squared times x1 squared. And then what I realize here is that this k2, and let me use a different color, so this k2 here can be canceled by one of those, and k1 plus k2 can be canceled by one of those, like this. And now let's see what we have in a simplified fashion. So here we have, this is equal to 1 half times, uh, that would be k1 divided by k2 times the quantity k1 plus k2 times x1 squared. Hmm, where should we go from here? Let's see here, let's see here. Okay, ah, I think we've got it. So now, because I'm trying to make this look like this, and so I have to have the sum of two things. 
So we're going to write that as the sum of two terms. So let's see what we get. So we're going to multiply this through. So we end up with, this is equal to 1 half times k1, k2 times k1. That would be k1 squared over k2 times x1 squared plus 1 half times k1 over k2 times k2. So the k2s cancel out. So I'm left with k1 times x1 squared. Okay, this is already equal to this. The question is, is this equal to that? All right, let's see here. We can replace x1 by this quantity times x2, but it's squared, so this is equal to 1 half times k1 squared over k2, and x1 squared can be replaced by this quantity squared, which is k2 squared divided by k1 squared times x sub 2 squared plus 1 half k1 x1 squared. Now let's see if we can simplify that to what we want it to be. So we have a k1 squared and k1 squared, those cancel out. And we have a k2 squared and a k2, so this cancel out with one of those. And then if we rearrange terms, we can then say that this is equal to 1 half k1 x1 squared plus 1 half k2 x2 squared. And this is equal to the right side of the equation. So what we've done is we've taken the left side equation, made it look like the right side equation, which means that the energy stored in the equivalent spring with using the equivalent k constant, the spring constant, that is equal to the sum of the energy stored in each of the spring separately. So we have a perfectly valid way of taking two springs together and turn into one equivalent spring with an equivalent co uh, spring constant and with the equivalent energy stored when we apply a force to it. And that is how that's done.